in 1978, this beer caused a little bit of a war in Belgium. See me walking around. Beer o'clock and from Castile Brewery or Brewery Van Honsbroek, we have a bottle of a St. Louis Premium Guise Lambic coming in at 4.5% ABV. Now this has just been released into Tesco's at £3 a bottle and it's a 37.5 sil a bottle. Um, an interesting beer because like I say in the intro, this beer caused a war. So let's dive into the history and find out why this, this beer caused a bit of a war in Belgium. Now obviously um, Castile Brewery, Van Hosbrook Brewery have been going since 1865. They're famous for the likes of the Castile beers, um, for the Brigand and for Falou, Passchendaele etc. And obviously the St. Louis and the Bacchus range of beers. And they were just brewing beer until sort of 1957 when they decided to move into the lambic market and do, do some creeks and do some lambics okay and then in 1971 this is when the st louis range of beers um came about and they're quite successful and then in 1978 this is the beginning of the guise war which apparently still goes on today a little bit and what it's to do with it's to do with their competitor which is which is Bel bellevue um which is the number one selling guise in belgium um it started a few battles between the two a bit of um and what actually happened was at that time you could only get guise in a bottle okay so uh, Castile Brewery had this idea or uh, um, Van Honsbroek Brewery had this idea to steal an edge by being the first people to put this on tap so that's what they did and Belvo sort of took a bit of sort of humbridge to it and decided right that's it we've got to get ours on tap right and it didn't just stop there um, you ended up with the battle actually ended up on the football pitch um, and what actually happened is um, <laughs> you had you had Belvo started sponsoring Andelect okay and um, and St Louis started to sponsor Club Bruges and they actually and this you know this this Guise war Literally, it went from went from the the bars to the football pitch. So it's an incredible story when you think about it. You know, it, it, <laughs> they had players kicking lumps out of one another on the football pitch because of the because of the beer. You know, it's, it's quite fascinating, really. So what we're going to do is we're going to crack this open. We're going to get it into the glass and we're going to give it a try. Um, oh, I'll just do this. There's quite a lot of gas. There we go. I thought that was going to explode uh, like that Matilda, but let's get it into the glass. There we go. Down. Right. What a lovely looking beer, hey? What do you think of that? It's an amber colour, it's clear, plenty of carbonation. It's got a beautiful two finger, slightly off white head. Let's get the aromas. Oh, there's a bitterness and a sadness there. Oh, there's a lot going on. There really is a lot going on here. I'm sort of getting from here the citrus notes. It's 
is a sweetness and a sadness and a bitterness Citrus, caramels. I think it's a case of just diving in and give it a try. Cheers. First thing I've just noticed there, a lot of greases when you when you take a sip of them your cheeks will literally be sort of sucked in. They're so sad. They're, uh, they're the sort of things that would make you pull a face, like a, a bit like a Haribo sour. Now this one here, is a quick sadness. Then you get this sweetness. And now we're getting this lovely bitterness develop into a right, nice, dry back aftertaste this dryness at the back end you know this is a really humid day today and i tell you what what a thirst quencher this beer is when that sweetness hits so you got like the lemon tartness and you get this bit of sweetness and it's like the sweetness is like one of those, I don't know if you've ever had them, them, them sweets, they look like strawberries, right, and they're soft, but they're covered in like a sherbety, um, I think Haribo or someone makes them, um, fizzy strawberries or something they're called. The same sensation is very similar to when you take a sip of the beer if you put one of them sweets in your mouth. Very, very similar I have got to say as a thirst quencher this is really good if you're a person who, who thinks sours are a little bit too much for you a little bit over you know the, it's just it's just too much for you um, you don't like that the way it squeezes your cheeks in, that sort of thing, then this is perhaps the beer for you because this is not overly sour. This is highly palatable. This is a nice drink to quaff on a hot day. You know, I can't say any more than that. It's so refreshing. I quite like a gin and tonic on a, on a hot day. I don't think you can beat a gin and tonic, but I tell you what, I think this would be my new substitute instead of having a gin and tonic on a hot day. You know, have a nice glass of this, or just sit there supping away um, while in the time. You know, it holds the head well, the lacing on the glass is fantastic. I can see why this is their premium one. Now, don't get me wrong. There is a sort of, a little bit of sort of white balsamic vinegar taste to this. So any of you who perhaps never had one in, in before, a grease, expect a bit of a balsamic vinegar. Um, that I'll take this to what I call of the white balsamic vinegar as opposed to your dark balsamic vinegar. But expect that, right? You know, don't don't go out and buy a bottle of this from Tesco and then turn around and go, oh, it tasted vinegary. It is, and I'm warning you now, but it's a pleasant um, sort of balsamic vinegar hue to it, if you know what I mean. Now, the reason why this isn't so balsamic vinegary as a lot of the other greases is because they actually blend some old and new lambics together. 
So they get some aged lambics and they get some freshly brewed lambics and they, they put them together to make their, their, their premium grease. And I'm really impressed with it to be honest. It's like, well I know some of, the, some of these top chefs now are mixing like strawberries with balsamic vinegar aren't they? In, in some of these, these, these um, desserts nowadays. You know it's quite a common thing to have sort of strawberries with balsamic, a good balsamic vinegar, you know. Not, not, your, not your cheap 199 special down at Tesco's, you know what I mean? It's, you know, the, you're talking, you know, the expensive balsamic vinegars. And that's what they're doing. And yeah, it's got this sort of quirkiness of the fruitiness of the, obviously the, the, the lemons that, and add definitely the strawberry element to this. There is a strawberry element to it with the balsamic vinegar. Um, it's refreshing, it's great, I love it. Will I buy it again? Yes. Um, I think it could be my new little tipple during the day on a hot day, to be honest. So there we go. So look, get down your Tesco's, get yourself a bottle of this. <laughs> it's three quid, you won't be disappointed. Try it, see what you think. Leave a comment below. Give us a big thumbs up if you like the review. Hit that little bell, get notified every time I bring out a new one. And of course, subscribe to the channel. And like I always say, beer is the answer, but I cannot remember the question. Thank you for watching. Good night. TT says, never play with matches, fireworks, and always drink responsibly. <laughs>